Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. conversation is with Michael Bangarus and he wants to teach us the difference between system relevant and human relevant. Some of the knowledge that we have is actually system based and if we don't use it day to day well we tend to forget some of it. Um, and he wants us to focus more on our human relevant things so that would be things that um, are creative and he believes that our first superpower is human is creativity and our second and third superpowers kind of go hand in hand because it's dialogue and it allows us to interact with each other and function through the systems that were created Amen. man. So, in some of those things, those communication things, those communication skills and everything that we, that we know, are also part of what has helped us survive as human beings for thousands of years. So, they not only become part of our superpower, but they become part of the reason why we're even alive to begin with. He wants us to focus on more on those human relevant superpowers and maybe a little less on the system ones so that we find a happier and maybe a better life. So why don't we bring Michael to the show and let's hear what he has to say and what he, what he how he wants us to think about our lives at hand. So, welcome to the show, Michael. Uh, how did there's a story behind you actually got started? With, with your art and how it um, how you want what the goal is is to cause an awareness um, and how did how did you actually get started as an artist and how did you come across the idea that, that you can do, that you can cause a, a great awareness with it uh, oh that's an awesome question Michael thanks for having me here uh, I was born in Vienna in Austria and I came here at 22 to America. I live in Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. what happens was I was a child and I went to school when I was seven. So I was the opposite of being conscious. I just tried to, like all the young humans and, and uh, uh, adolescents, want to survive. You, you survive day by day. You know, you want to 
get into the tribe. I couldn't, couldn't, because when I went to school when I was seven, I found out I'm completely for systems. I'm because I'm so neurodiverse, and uh, I have dyslexia combined with dysgraphia, which is why I can't read my handwriting. And you know how that was 40 years ago, where the handwriting was everything. There weren't computers. Yeah. And so I couldn't fit in. I couldn't fit in. So the only way where I felt like normal, quote unquote, was in the most abnormal community, the artist community. <laughs> I felt, you know, the most abnormal community I was. And um, because it didn't matter there, you know, you create a, you know, a theater piece and you don't have a guy, you just put a girl in there, you know, and put a mustache on her. Uh, it's just, it's just about the product. It's not about the individual humans ruling hierarchy or anything. It's just, we create a piece of art together, mm -hmm. whatever that is, music, uh, thing, and it has to work because it doesn't work when everybody a star. So uh, you have feelings, obviously, but that's a role in the team. And so I found myself when I was 30 and I applied for jobs, I saw, oh my God, I'm an artist. Because artists, you have to be deemed eh, a civil society. Right. That when you get an award, like you just get a did, you know? So you you got to be deemed as that. If you're good or not, in, in the eyes of society, of a system, you're good or not. But basically, it's not about the create the the product. It's about the creation process. Yeah. Where you really learn. You know, know that. You know, you had an idea to make a podcast and, you know, bringing that spark of inspiration into the physical. That's why everybody looks at artists and people that create stuff. Oh my God, I could never do that. But we all can do that. We are all a creator animals. I think we are collaborative uh, creator animals by nature. Yeah. And so I thought when I was 30, I, I decided, you know, I, I couldn't have done it. Yeah, I couldn't be an accountant. So I, I said, there's no way. So this is how I get, got into owning that I'm an artist and not, not just waiting that somebody else says, you, you're a great artist. You know, so so I really own that. And I see the difference because I talked to thousands of artists in my life. Even established, very established artists find it very uncomfortable to call themselves an artist because they lack the awareness that they are. They think, okay, society, you know, it's just really, when you're deemed to be an artist, uh, you're an artist today and tomorrow you're a crack. You know, it's like it doesn't, or you're yeah. nothing and to, you for whatever reason you created a product that people like, you're the, the super artist. So I think that awareness when I was about 30 was pivotal for me because I owned what I am. I owned my human centric function, a part of it, mm -hmm. not the whole of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Then I grew up and that was always in art. Um, I had great chances without, without any education. I think nothing would have given me the chances to work with Robert Evans, could it the Godfather, you know, and Chinatown yeah. to live with him, you know, no, but nobody would have, I was also arts commissioner of Newport Beach, have done without, I couldn't have done that job without an education. Uh, now, or this job only, see, there's my, there's like, yeah, this job only allowed me to be arts commissioner without an education because I have zero education. I am completely off top. Yeah. Well, I, I remember this uh, from growing up when you talk about dyslexia because yeah. um, there's different types of it also. Uh, and um, I'm very dyslexic with, with letters and words and things like that when I type emails and I, and I, I ran a, a chemistry lab, and my my uh, my VP supervisor said, "You're not allowed to send emails anymore because <laughs> we can't understand what, you, what you're writing." <laughs> yeah, 
it's like because there's words missing and all that kind of stuff. But I remember um, growing up that I was told that I would never amount to much more than than a floor sweeper because, well, you can't. You couldn't write. fit in. You, you, yeah, you, you couldn't you, fit you in. You weren't good in the hierarchy. They had been. See, this is the problem. In nature, you're worthy because you exist. Because nature mm-hmm. doesn't make mistakes. It's just saying, I've got to make a million elephant, elephants too many. You know, and they have to somehow survive. That would nature totally imbalance. But in systems, you have to have system relevance. And everybody that is somehow different, and we all are. Every mm-hmm. human is one of one with own fingerprints, own irises, uh, own DNA. We are all not fitting in. Because tell me one person you have met that said, oh, I fit in perfectly all the time. Never. No. Unless you are the super doc in a football team, but then later on, you might not fit in anymore. <coughs> well, they, there, there lies, li- lies the problem is is uh, later on in life that, that they find themselves not fitting in because, hey, oh, being a football star doesn't necessarily amount to anything. A perfect yeah. example of that would be um, O.J. Simpson. Yeah. yeah. You know, he... Uh, it, and there's some people that I just mentioned that name to, they wouldn't even know who, who he is, either from football anymore, or, anymore, or, any, yeah. or anything yeah. that, that's yeah. happened in his life. So, so, but um, I like what you say about owning who you are. And for a lot of people, it, it takes a lot longer than the age of 30 to, to learn to own who you are. So... I think I, I think I still didn't know what, who I am, but I knew that part of me. Mm-hmm. So I said I could in something else. It was like logical, this, you know, uh, subtraction. I couldn't have been, uh, you know, uh, an accountant, the bookkeeper, uh, a politician, or anything. I had to, I had to be, I had to be what I am. You know, I couldn't be a doctor. So I know I have to call myself an artist because I have to have some systemical reference point not for me but for to to say what are you i'm an artist and also it is a guidepost to the direction you're gonna go if i wouldn't i would have owned i love i'm healing animals or healing human and i love that i want to be an md then and there wouldn't be a problem then i would have studied for md and then there's a reference point that this is my is going to be my life contribution to the whole because we are collaborative beta animals you know yeah. we all contribute to this reality yeah and in that, that that is one important part uh, about your your artwork and, the, and some of the things that you have done um is the collaboration part um mm-hmm. in um, do you think that that's something that, that with all the corporate competition, you got to be the best at this or the best at that? That we that we're forgetting that nature part of us that we have to learn to collaborate. Yeah, over generations, we have forgotten who we are. That we, I mean, what human other than I or or will tell you we are part of nature? It's not important. It's not important if you have. If we say, okay, we are part of nature, but what counts is the system relevancy. Mm-hmm. In man-made system, a habitat that we created, it's not like nature created that. We are but we're supposed to be in nature with animals, with other living beings, plants in harmony, like everything else, like every other species. We can also create. We also have the self-awareness to create because then I can, sh- that's collaboration comes in. I can cut trees, make a house out of it or a hut out of it, and you can walk that, you can rip it, and so we create New York, Singapore. You know? So yeah. I think it's important to to be aware, not to learn anything, not to think, but where, what, who are we? What is the human condition? Versus what is my uh, system relevancy? Because system relevancy is so minute compared it's very complicated and intricate because we it wasn't done by nature Mm -hmm. but it isn't it it isn't it isn't um uh, it it isn't our natural being and we have to 
compartmentalize that there's two worlds. This is the metaverse that Facebook did, but it's a metaverse. It is, we are creator animals, collaborative, and we created an environment that now uh, being in, being, I think, uh, conditioned by, you know, the shiny object uh, syndrome, you know, that you find from ecology, that we say, oh my God, New York, it's better, it's more valuable than me, but I'm a part of that species that created New York, that right. created Apple, that created Google, you know? Right. So, so, so we disvalue ourselves because we value too much our systemic habitat and being system relevant. And I think this is where, because I, this is where my strength is because I've never fit in. So I have a perspective that is really clear and really can separate, uh, you know, the, the product from the journey, which I found in my last book, The Smart of Art. I wondered why 99%, 98% of artists are poor worldwide. And I dove into it and I said, and I found out it's not about the art product. That's like a commodity. You know, it's about the process of bringing in a thought into this reality, making a documentary out of it, yeah. making a, a, a painting out of it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that process is important. If the mm -hmm. documentary ever is liked or not, you have already gotten all your value out of it. You're not getting, you get only systemic value, but like money, awards out of it once it's done. Right. But the, your growth, you got out by creating that documentary, by having the, the inspiration that, how did that work? Oh, I thought about, oh, my friend, oh, I read a newspaper. What was the inspiration? And then how you invested that into a, you know, 30, 45 hour film, you know, how did you create that? And there's so much value in this, but we don't look at that. See, the problem is artists are not looking in, in the creation process. They not milking all the values that are there. Like we are talking right now. We are very focused on it. We are very in the moment. That's why podcasting is so fulfilling because we are dancing, you know, yeah. uh, I adapt to you, you adapt to me. And by that we grow. Yeah, and we. Well, that that. Go ahead. One of one of the that's one of the beautiful things about humanity and our ability to to form relationships is like just by talking to you today, you have changed my life. And you mine, right? Because that, that that wouldn't even looking at the creation process, I wouldn't choose the words without you. If you were in there just listening, and you know, I say so often, somebody, you know, I go to a lot of interviews where there's four people, there's panels, mm -hmm. and one person doesn't say anything or says only one word. And he changes the whole conversation just being there because next time I go into the same group and that person is not there, it's a completely different uh, 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 creation. But if you and I would say, M Michael, let's, let's just repeat this episode. That was so great. But I want to do create it with a better sound or some light, lighting or something. We couldn't. We don't appreciate it, the oneness of the moment. We right. we appreciating we appreciating what the success is. It's a system uh, relevant success. If you get awards, if you get a lot of views, but they don't mean anything in the human centricity. They mean something in the system because you have to feed yourself. And all that stuff, you know. Yeah, but that's you. You have you have a point about the, about the process because from th from our our conversation here, we have two computers, two cameras running, and we can see each other. We can talk to each other, and we have an effect on each other. But it continues more when you actually have to put finish the, the the process of the creation so that the public can see what it what will actually eventually hear this that is like the process of putting 
adjusting the sound levels and putting uh, music to, to the beginning and to the end and all that kind of stuff, you, you as the artist who's creating the podcast, you get to keep reliving it until you make it public. And that has another effect on you, right? Absolutely, yeah. And, and when you and I, I think it's beautiful that you make it more palatable with the music and everything. Uh, and the, the the great effect of podcast, other people can relate to it with their five senses. It's not a noise, which is the same AI is going to be a noise of a new team for people create a show that is focused on getting people enrolled to watch it and be system relevant for them. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a manipulated product to make, there's nothing wrong with it, no. but there is a difference, a big difference between two people talking when other people and I think that's what the world is so longing for because the whole world uh, podcasts shoot up and media engagement is down everywhere. Social media is down. All this stuff goes down, but our engagement of in the podcast is up. I think we two months ago we had more uh, uh, views on podcasts than Netflix in one month mm -hmm. in America. So, yeah. so this is going up because people are hungry for genuine connection we all interconnected through their listening to two humans talk not we read not reading from a script teleprompter yeah but we talk in in a conversation i cough you scratch your head you know it's 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 very generic not perfect and that and that that triggers i think that that authenticity, that genuinity mm -hmm. triggers five six senses of everybody that is listening. Not just ours to dance the dance, but also people can relate to it with their, not with their brain, but with their six senses. I said, I have the same. I was not fitting into school. I wasn't, you know, uh, and look at these people. I thought I'm a loser. And these people, both very neurodiverse, and look what they do. They have awards. They work with people. So in that, they feel the truth in that versus I say, you can do it, Everybody, which is a big lie. Because what you can do, I can't do. And what I can do, you can do. Because you're one of one. You can't. Right. You can't beat me. I can't beat you. Or unless you have seen two people that are the same, that are different people. I've never seen that. But the system lie is... And the coaching lie, a lot of in the coaching they do. I did it. Got so many looks. You can do it too. And they tell you false hope. Because that's, a, you know, it's the same lie as every day it should be sunny. And if it's not, we sell you a Ferrari, a Peel, or a Fiat. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's It has to be genuine human-centric existence. And then use the systems, you know, to make money, to, 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 to help you to be the best human that you and I can be. Yeah. Because essentially, um, since we're on the topic of money, that money is just a tool. Yeah. And it's a symptom also. It's a, it it's is, not a it cause. Is, yes. It's never a cause. Because if it was a cause, then there were, was, would be a formula of success. And there is no formula of success. It's right. sold systemically. There is a formula of success. But I've talked, I think, to at least 100 very, very successful people. And everybody tells me another story. Just look at the success. How many success books do you have? They are the biographies, not, not, not formulas, not systemic, you know, how to do bookkeeping. If that was the case, then we wouldn't have a money problem in this world, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you remember the, the, the movie The Secret? Yeah. And... I, I got to speak to some of the people behind the, the scenes of The Secret. Mm -hmm. um, and they all said the same thing. is like, okay, there comes a point where it doesn't matter if I make any more money. Mm -hmm. It's like, what becomes, uh, what, what 
st- starts to matter to them more is not the money, it's the impact. I think it's the fulfillment, and when you yeah. are fulfilled, then automatically you have impact. The thing, and you create fulfillment is your emotional feedback loop that you aligned with your puzzle piece in humanity. Mm-hmm. So when you're fulfilled, so you and I are fulfilled right now, so yeah. it's a part of our puzzle piece. This is on our path. This is the journey. So we are on the path of the journey. We are not off the path. We are on because or the direction fits because it, life is a process of being fulfilled and the feedback loop of love or fulfillment. So it goes like the feedback for fulfillment. Oh, hey, you're on the right path. Then you are happy. So you are longer on the path and then you feel love. That is the feedback loop. Then you fit. You fit other human you know to to other human p- puzzle pieces yeah and when you feel that but it's not the other person you feel that the other person makes you not feeling love the other person is just a resonate a resonance that you dance with and that makes you calm up the feeling of love in you and that's why you have some people that are not that far you know that are not aware of this they're not they can't believe why somebody's in love with them you know yeah but so the one person is in love, the other isn't because the other isn't aware that it's not the other person, but that they bring each other into center, into the moment. Yeah. So the, the, the question is, how do we keep recreating moments of f- fulfillment from within ourselves? Being aware, because... If you don't know that a hot stove is burning your hand, you can read systemically, because language is a system too, 15 books. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's libraries of what love is. And once you, if you haven't experienced the emotion of love in your life or being in love or being having a crush on somebody, these books are worthless. The books are, the knowledge is worthless. And that's why I say when we systemically try the secret, for example, systemically explain the human condition, it's always distorted in a way. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say, for example, from secret, that the secret is missing. Actually, it, it's everything, the environment, but the real secret is missing that you have to end with the frequency. But... Uh, but you don't even understand that. I mean, I don't. I couldn't understand that. What that means, aligning to frequency. Mm-hmm. That means a total different perspective to look look at life, to see frequencies. You know, and yeah. and I think the only way is that it's listening to talks like this. There's no homework. There's five steps or, uh, or or a book you need to read. It's just listening because it has a wider spectrum than than reading. Reading is you. Go into a system and then you read systemically and take that systemic information and translate it in experience. And when five people read the same book, they all have a different uh, experience. So it's, it's, it's the, hum- the most valuable asset for humans is to interact with other humans, even if you fight. Even if you love them, if it's just you, you're oblivious, but interaction is the biggest growth. That, the biggest investment you can do is spending your time with humans. That is the absolute most rewarding uh, for you, for your journey. Yeah. Because I, couldn't, I wouldn't survive if there wasn't women and there was, uh, excuse me, <laughs> there was, was uh, humans and, uh, and, um, and art. Because in art gives you the any creation and art mm-hmm. gives you the blueprint of what's humanly the blueprint is baked into art, art creation right. of how we can interact and puzzle ourselves together. It's yeah. it's 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 creating stories that people whatever a narrative a systemically a narrative but it is really as more a story where other people can relate to. Yeah. In that process of, of of it be it becomes 
it evolves so, so much like um, the curiosity of it because you sit you sit there you listen and and then as you in the creation of the of the story te- or retelling of, of of the experience becomes an important process right yeah because in that re- retelling in you know in telling this magic in telling they say a lot of spiritual things uh, people but that's also systemic no there is something in it in the function of telling stories look what is the archetypal what is the archetypal interaction with other humans you you live in your cave alone or with your family mm-hmm. you go to the campfire which is the restaurant right today is the restaurant mm-hmm. and then you share food and stories that is so ingrained in us and i you know i i work a lot in, in uh, hospitality business and i also consult there and i think this is what we told have lost in we, we think we want to make an experience the experience is the ritual sitting together sharing a meal and sharing to relate to each other it's so valuable and the system of complete it is the most valuable of a restaurant to create the atmosphere for people, not to impress them, not to give them 15,000 dishes, but to, to, to allow them to have an environment that is conducive for interaction and sharing foods and allowing you know, engagement, sharing foods and, a lot, and, and sharing story and relate to each other yeah. and see what out of that story develops. Oh, I can relate to that too. Let me add to it. Like what we're doing right now. This yeah. is exactly what we're doing right now. Yeah. In, 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 you're, you're right that, that the idea of the restaurant or the, say the, the, the Thanksgiving feast or the Christmas feast is like all gathered around the campfire enjoying food and the company of those that you're sharing it with. Yep. Yeah. And we can all relate because not, not, we're not relating uh, because there could be one in that group that is an MD and another is an accountant yeah. and the other is an artist. We can relate to each other through our six senses. Mm-hmm. I say six senses because it's the resonance, how you, if you resonate with something or not. Yeah. And we can, we can grow from this because we are all built to grow. Even if you put in a, a person in prison, he grows or she. So it's all about constant growing. We, we, it's never, it's always a process. And that's where the, the problem comes with systems because they're static. And if a system is outdated, they create another system or use another system uh, to help the outdatedness and to take over a company and integrate, you know. But it's still the problem is, the basic problem is it's outdated in its functions. And this is what I share that we need to update our systems to be human relevant because the tension of us growing our consciousness being more aware and an outdated playground you know that has stuff that soft you know soft uh, where you fall that concrete and and monkey bars this we need to update and they become human relevant yeah and and that, that's my big mission this is my you know i said if you can separate human centric human centricity where human you have human part of nature not we are not we are not the chiefs of nature but part of nature mm-hmm. and that has to be priority and the system and we use them to support that and be in in harmony with it then I fifty percent of our problems we can write in the language. Then that, that 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 makes sense because it, it, the like like you keep saying is is we we don't necessarily need the system, although we do need the system to to because we created the society, but the. The problem is how do is there a point where um, 
the system is the idea of system itself becomes outdated and we have to move past we have to evolve past having systems oh you are so far in the future <laughs> <laughs> you, you're like okay let's yeah. think 500 years you're okay yeah we have over generation a disconnect from our habitat and now we don't even we're not even aware is the I'm, that's why I'm a creativity awareness educator. I just try to make people aware. I'm not saying they should buy anything. They should change anything. Just be aware you are navigating, teeter-tottering between system relevance and human centricity. Yeah. You have sexual drive. You have uh, you feel love. You have to integrate that in the systemic environment. Right. First, be aware of that that's the first step awareness i'm not for changing systems for uh, abandoning system yet we are there in the conscious obviously you have a you have to like five, five i love that that you say that <laughs> because well, i can see see i have never thought about this but i can see if we are aware enough as humans yeah and live as one human family not as a conceptual systemic conceptual uh construct of we are the world that's a difference you know if we are one human family where we all contribute and collaborate with each other doesn't mean you're you're rich you can still play monopoly but we are not a systemically created that's that's i think one of the big problems currently that we try systemically to understand the human condition with science with ai with all that stuff yeah and always will be distorted because we created an environment and, and an artist cannot create a boss and say boss let me say how this is got how how did this go with michael to that that boss? or should i write michael an email after this show the boss doesn't know it's like it's like when you are a creator this is the mm -hmm. law of creation you cannot submit to your creation otherwise there's no reason for you there's no reason for you to be a you can't you can adapt i can make a house a mm -hmm. hut and say i'm gonna sleep in that hut so i'm adapting from being out in nature to sleeping in a hut and it's nicer there's there's nothing that bugs me more and whatever but you can't ask the hut what to do and you can make the hut if the hut needs everything you can pollute everything around you and say the hut needs to be clean that doesn't work. You can't submit to that. You always need to see the context where you are and what you're doing. Right. And that's awareness, right? That is the awareness. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I think that's where we are in our evolution is that we have to become aware of what is happening around us. And I, in in some respects, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we got climate change we have all these sort of things but the 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 thing is is can we say that we can master climate change and take it back one and a half degrees or do we have to or do do we enjoy the journey of the one and a half degrees as it is right now i think we have to enjoy it and, and as two it's not one solution it's mm -hmm. two number one we need to be aware that we can easily destroy our habitat look at beijing they had to turn everything off after olympic games so we are capable of destroying our habitat and our future's habitat but we know from dinosaurs that the a species gets eliminated and nature goes on. We know also know from Chernobyl, which is a massive disaster, atomic yeah. disaster. Look at the, the, the Google uh, Earth pictures. It's totally grown over. Nature just takes back. So we are, we need to be in dominion with, in a, in a, in a circulatory organic relationship with nature because since we are part of nature, nature gives us the essential uh, basis to survive. Yeah. 
So it doesn't. It, so we are not in charge of me, and we also the shaming, the self shaming of we uh, polluted this wor this world, and when the Earth goes warmer, oh my God, it's us, which is a complete arrogance. Because it it might be us, it might be not us. Nobody knows. I I mean, when you look at science, science says. Which I don't. That's not one hundred percent either. That's a systemic absorption yeah. of our of our environment. That every circle, uh, Earth has hundred year circles where it gets cold and it gets hot and whatever. Uh, it, it 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 is. We need to protect one thing. One thing only: our habitat. So if something that doesn't affect humans gets destroyed, in us, is not our problem. Our problem is. Can we breathe? Can we have clear water? Do we have enough green space to reset our system disturbance? Mm -hmm. And out of that consciousness, you need to say, what can we do now? Not. Because nobody, humans cannot relate to save the earth. We can't. When, when it's, they, they can relate, oh, there's Michael in Canada and he, his little puppy is thing, you know, like that was with that, um, with that captain, ship captain, uh, the, you know, the, he left, you know, the ship went down there, he left his dog and, and, and they asked him, why is your dog, you know, why are you so sad? I said, my dog is there. It, it looked with the, with the glasses, you know, the helicopter looked, at, oh, it's right there. And instantly all humans helped to save that animal. You know, yeah. uh, it, it was a million and a half dollars to save that animal. Uh, and on a sinking, sinking ship, I mean, where is the logic? There is no logic. It is who we are. It is not the logic. It's not the systemic, okay, we can't do that. It's people banding together as one family and say, and hate this, you know. Yeah. Hate, 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 hate the, the issue. And that's how we should look at nature. I mean, we can't relate to save, the, the, save all this race, save all this... Uh, things it, we can't relate to it that's why i always say equality exists by nature don't try to systemize equality every race on this planet woman man sexuality is enough because they exist mm -hmm. it's 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 valuable because it's the value of that living being of that human is proven by its existence. It wouldn't be existing if that per would be the devil, or if that person would be the thing, you know, the Elon Musk. It, it doesn't matter what you are, you are valuable. And it's for us to figure out, with the help of systems, what is the value of, of the two Michaels? Right. You know, what is it? What, what, help us find, because we know there's a reason, because we exist, mm -hmm. what is it? So where is the best way to fit? And you make that systemically because systemically the value systemic is distorted. It is not, it's a human, it's a habitat that doesn't really reflect your value because you can be the richest person and you could be horrible to humans. You can be the, the, the poorest person and be the best for human, for humanity. And that's, yeah. and I always say, you know, look at the beggar on, on Fifth Avenue and, and, and all the people. He has, he has more influence than you and me because he's reminding people systemically you can lose everything tomorrow and end up like me. So the, the human-centric value of a banker on Fifth Avenue is more than the, the, the none on the system. It's system relevant. Oh, this guy is, has no system value. But human value is bigger than a lot of us. Yeah. So his human value becomes more intrinsic than his system. It his is system. intrinsic. It, that, that is, yeah, it's, it's, it, and it's probably more important than his systemic value. Otherwise, he could be systemic. It was, if, if systems and humans would be in balance, if, if humans would use systems to support humanity, there would never be a beggar. Because we would, uh, we would, uh, systems would accept your existence. We don't need to us. It's like 
if there's an earthquake, we don't need to discuss that there is. It is. But if it rains, it rains. Right. You know, that person exists. And because of his existence, he's well. That's not just nature. You have to surrender to that. That's it. Yeah. Because you and I don't know what that beggar's uh, purpose is. Is it, or whole uh, purpo uh, purpose is, is it inconsequential. It's only consequential in, se in systems. And I, I can demonstrate the importance of separating those two. And this, if we, we do nothing, Michael, then giving the people, uh, the listeners, an awareness of how much value it is if you just separate system relevant versus human centric. And may, the, the, the thing of human centric has to be number one priority because without humans, there's no systems. There's no, so if humans are not important, then systems are ir irrelevant. If we kill all the humans tomorrow, systems are irrelevant. If we kill, uh, if we turn off all the systems, humans find a way. There might be people dying, obviously, and stuff, yes. but, we, but, but we find our way. Right. Overall, we would find our way. Yeah. Oh, well, why? we find our way. We created that. So why wouldn't we create another system? Yeah. Well, that would that would be the 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 nature of things, right there. Is yeah. that? Yeah. Um, because even going back to 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 the dinosaurs, we don't see the big dinosaurs anymore. But yeah. we find we found evidence in in things that are alive today that says that the dinosaurs were there. Yeah, and and it's uh, like birds. Birds are there, dinosaurs. Yeah, uh, you know pelicans, even close, very close. You know. Yeah. So, but they didn't adapt, and when you don't have to be in harmony with nature, you die. Yeah. If if you keep keep polluting our our earth and say i'm right because the western world i mean if the eastern world someone says we are right we can keep polluting the world because the western had their time that is a systemic thought mm -hmm. that is excluding that we are one family and we can all work together you know to to right. to, to harmonically uh, harmoniously resolve that issue well, not to just you know go ahead yeah. Well, if we look at the at, at um, the history of of human beings itself, whenever there is a crisis, that we have found ways to work together. Absolutely. COVID. COVID. We yeah. worked all together. Nine eleven. We worked all together. Yeah. But it shouldn't be a crisis that st that that stars that 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 puts us totally in the survival mode because working together comes out of that. Now we are pushed in the corner. It's 9-11. Now, COVID. Right. We have to learn to be, in, offer from a talk, a story, to lift potential that we actually don't slide into crisis because crisis are resets uh, of, uh, of systems. System is static and the reset of a war, the reset of a financial crisis, the, you know, the, 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 the pandemic, they are symptoms of systems collapsing. They're not, they're not, oh, it just happened like in nature. No, it mm. doesn't happen. When, when, when a virus cannot find life on its host, he changes hosts. Yeah. Very easy. So if systemically put, you screw with nature and put nature into, you know, into a, a controlled environment, then the virus says, I can't live on this host and I need to jump. I need to mutate to humans. I'm mm -hmm. not saying the, the crap. I'm not saying I'm not poor against the shot. I'm just saying we are looking through the wrong perspective of our through our existence. You will never find any any solutions. I'm so good in solutions finding because they are anticipates, but uh, I'll anticipate, but uh, I'll and I like the biggest problems because problems because I know and one big tool is and one big tool is separate them in human centric and in system uh, relevant uh, uh, you know environments then you can deal with it on a more wise level not on a more system level you know money relevant level 
yeah. you, because we need to not lose that connection of human centricity. We, we, we can't and we have to keep it priority and not saying, okay, the system decides what we should do it and what humans are, def what is defined as a human. I mean, yeah. we will be lived in a, in, a, in a thing where uh, people of color were, were treated like an animal. Yeah. Where 15 people for uh, to uh, eradicate 6 million, eradicate 6 million Jews. Where is the logic in it? Where is the logic? Where is the human centric justification yeah. of this? Yeah. And you brought up an, an, another crisis where this the system had a collapse and, and a reset, right yeah, there. Reset right. And, and used used killing six million people as the reset. Yes. So 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 are a threaten and reset because if the six million of oh, what do you think that does to humanity? When six million people randomly that friends of yours, because you're not looking, is that a systemic Jew or is it a Muslim or is it a Christian? You look at humans as your friends, you know, and then it wasn't so big like it is now, where it's so system uh, categorized and stereotyped. Uh, you have your friend and all of a sudden that friend isn't anymore because he is systemically an other category than you family. That's insane. That is that's insane. That is in, that is defined insanity. War, uh, you know, uh, Holocaust. Those are things that are defined, the, and we don't look at this. I mean, there's people that say there is no Holocaust. There was no Holocaust. There's people that deny these things, and I'm not there at all. I said use it to make us stronger. Use things, the wars and everything to make us strong enough to repeat them. Now we right. integrated them. There's a war in Europe and, and very little people, you know, uh, are aware even. They live their lives and next day are 300,000 people, uh, soldiers, I'm not even talking about people, have died because one or two disturbed humans taken advantage of the benevolence of human beings. They yeah. inherited them because humans are not what you see on, 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 on media. On media, you see disturbed humans that are system disturbed. Because if they say, oh, Michael and Michael had a really nice talk, very human centric and very valuable, they would never say that. But if I would undress myself, hit the camera and yell, we would get attention. So the system disturbance is what's valuable in media, not, and that's why I think it's also why people are looking for humans talking. That's why podcasts are so strong. You can't do that systemically. Yeah. Yeah. So, since we're running out of time now, it's like, wow. I mean, it seems like you can do this anytime, started. you know, Michael. And what's that? We can do this anytime. And yeah. if we can make yeah. it specific uh, art or anything else. Is is there something, is there a specific lesson you, you want uh, our humanity at this time to learn? Yeah, that the best way to get to where what we talked about is the best, first of all, make the difference in human centric and system relevant. What life are you living? Which life are you prioritizing? It's okay to, to teeter totter in between systems and you know, systems are a good thing. They're not just negative. Yeah. But so <laughs> teeter totter, be aware. And see which one you give preference or which one you submit and then feel the stress and the disease. Because it's when you unplug from the system centricity and pretend is system is pretend is system is system relevant. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's where stress and, and things you're doing constantly saying you so submitting to time, you know, to system systemic time. Mm -hmm. Not to your rhythm, not to your bio rhythm, not to, you know, you stay up all night. Oh, it's good to work at night. It's not good. You know, that, that's why we have night. So, uh, and and uh, to find that is chase fulfillment. Mm -hmm. That's your feedback that you are on the right path. Because I can't give you 
uh, eight, I can't give eight billion people uh, a using instruction, but eight people I can give instruction. If you feel fulfilled, on the right path. If you feel love, you're on the right path. Right. That, that doesn't mean that our love relationship works out or not, but you are in, while you feel it, you are on the right path. And I say the best way to be, get into your power is to find the best you that you can be, you can be, not for others. The best you, you can be. And if you're tired, take a nap. Yeah. Not, I have to push myself through to finish this interview. If I was tired, I would have, or, or if I was not feeling well, I would have, Michael, I'm not feeling well, let's postpone. Right. That always has to be secondary. The system has to be always secondary. Well, you know, when a mother is feeling guilty because the, the, the kid is sick, that she doesn't go to work. That should never be. So basically, find the best thing that you be. That, that's it. Yeah. Just re-listen to this episode to get it. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us today, Michael. It's it, you know, it's in, enlightening, and I hope that uh, that others get find find their own enlightenment through this. So, all right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening today. And you can find uh, Michael. Just simply uh, Google his his name, and he pops up all over the place. Um, is there any other ways? That, did you like yeah. people to connect with you? No. Uh, just go on my hub. Michael with two L's, Michael M, mm -hmm. Michael with two L's, MichaelM.com. That's that you find everything there. My books, my music, my appearances. You can hire me there. All the stuff. Awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody, and thank you again, Michael, for joining us. Pleasure. Help us to This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.